Okay, so you know, this second to last section is basically you know, understanding you know, this notion of compactness. Right? Um, what do we know so far? Do, do anybody, do all, do any, does anybody remember anything about compact sets after, after the break? What do you know about compact sets? Anything? Tell me, tell me anything you know, one thing. If a set is compact, it's bounded. If a set is compact, it's bounded, right? Um, did we get that? I don't, we, I, don't think we, I don't think we know that, actually. Although, is it true? Let's think about that. Suppose you have, um, uh, so you're saying it's com if it's compact, then it's bounded. That's not something that we that we said, but certainly, uh, why is that? Does that does that? S or another way of saying it is, is, is if it is unbounded, right? Let's unbounded, then it's not compact. Right. So, because does that? These are actually true statements. Um, uh, why is that? Why is that obvious? Why is it obvious that if it's unbounded, then it's not going to be compact? OK, so remember what compact means. Right? Compact means that uh, every open cover has a, uh, a decent finite subcover. There's a, there's a, there's a subcollection of the open open cover that still covers the still covers the set, right? Okay. So why would unbounded mean that that's going to fail? Suppose you have a set. It's unbounded, so you know, it has points that go off to points that go off to infinity in one way or another. Can you construct an open cover that has no finite subcover? I don't, I'll just ask you. Construct an open cover. I'll command you. <laughs> I mean, uh, construct an open cover that has no finite subcover. You can do it. Um, well, I have a question. Can yeah. you even construct an open, open cover? Open, yeah, why not? Define that. You can well. Uh, here's here's a dumb one. You um, you take the entire uh, real line that then that covers that covers it, right? That would be an open cover. Yeah. Uh, yes. When you say real line, does that equal to negative infinity to infinity open cover? Is that the same thing? The real and that. So it would be. So here here would be my open cover. It consists of one one open set. That's it. So that's real. That would be that would be the open cover, it consisting of the entire the entire real line. Yeah, Mia. Uh, it can't be compact. Would you take like whatever open cover you or whatever yeah whatever open cover you choose? Would you take that upper bound of it and then say like let that be the M that like the sequence always exceeds. You know, when you're proving that something's unbounded, unbounded, you have you pick a number and you prove that there's always something greater than it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you could do. So I, I, I whoa. So, are you saying like take um, like no matter what you choose, your upper bound will always be exceeded of your open cover? Uh, it depends on what cover you choose, actually. So, um, so let me let me um, let me give you an example of, of an open. So, um, here's some, here's an example of an unbounded set. So, any any unbounded set is going to have you know, points that go off to infinity, right? So try this. Um, take the cover negative n, n, where n goes, n is in the naturals. OK, 
So that's going to be um, like negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 3, and so on and so forth. So you're taking intervals that, you know, that are expanding. Okay. Then that's an open, that's going to, that's going to cover your whole line. So certainly it covers your set. Right? You have an unbounded set, but we're going to cover the whole line. Right? Okay. And then, now the thing is that, um, so this is an open cover. Right? So let's, here's, here's what we're doing. We're showing that if it's unbounded, then it can't be compact. Right? So you have some unbounded set. Here's an open cover of it because it covers, covers the whole line, so it certainly covers your set. Okay. And then you say, um, right, no finite subcollection, subcollection can cover, so uh, say K is an, an unbounded set. Take this thing, it's an open cover of it, but no finite subcollection can cover K. Right? Do you, does everybody see that? That if you take a finite subcollection of this of this thing, that's not gonna cover K. Why not? Suppose you take a finite <coughs> subcollection, here it is. I don't know, wing one one, five, wing five, five. Negative, a million, negative a thousand, a thousand. Right. You take some finite subcollection, can that cover K? No, why not? Because K is, K is unbounded. Right. And you see that no matter what finite subcollection I take, it's still going to fail. Right? Because any finite subcollection is only going to cover um, you know, some, some bounded interval. Right? But our set is unbounded. Okay. So here, um, so, uh, so what you see is that if you're unbounded, then you won't be compact. Right? Unbounded. If you're unbounded, you can construct an open cover that has no fine, no decent finite subcover. Okay. So in fact, it is true um, uh, that compact doesn't be bounded, and you can see it with a certain reason. Yeah, Ichan. Um, when you try to show something is uncompact. Not compact. Not compact, yeah. You just need to find yes. an, any open cover yes. that doesn't have finite subcover. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because compact means every open cover has a decent finite subcover. Non-compact would mean there's some open cover that fails. Okay. <coughs> Me, you look very, very intensive. You're thinking of something? No. No. Okay. okay. It looks to me that you're actually like you're processing. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, compact actually does imply bounded. Um, what? But uh, that's not one of the things that we've seen. But but it's certainly true, and we could have figured it out. We could have we could have seen it earlier. Um, what? Does anybody know anything else about compact? We have the definition of compact. So we had some uh, uh, we had some results, right? What were the results? You are kind of sluggish, and this anybody have the results? Compact implies close. Um, we also had that uh, if if k is compact. subset of K and F is closed, then F is compact. So any closed subset of a compact set is still compact. So these are other properties. 
And the last thing that we did um, in class last time was that if f is continuous and k is compact, then if something happens. Uh, then the image of f on k is also compact. That's where we that's where we finished up. And you remember that how that went, right? You started off with a compact set. K. You map it through F, you get something else over here, F of K. Right? And you can see that that's compact by seeing that whenever you have an open cover here, you can pull it backwards to here. Since this is compact, you get a finite subcover. That finite subcover covers K, and so the corresponding Corresponding sets will cover f of k, right? So that gives you a finite subcover covering covering f of k. So f of k is also compact. Okay. 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 But yeah, the, you know, if, if the notion of compactness is is sort of opaque to you, you know, you're you. That's, that's how it is for everybody at the beginning. Um, what does is, what is compactness mean? Um, okay, okay. So I'm going to put up. Um, okay, so I'm going to put up some other properties of compactness. This will also seem really opaque. But then hopefully it'll all come, it'll all come, all, all come together in the end. So um, actually, let's do, let's do the easy one before we do the hard one. So um, if k is compact, uh, if k com is compact and you have a subset of k, uh, say k is compact and e is a subset of k, if e is infinite, There's a, you know, so E contains an infinite number of points, right? So the cardinality of E is infinite. Um, then E, uh, so the number of E? Yeah, the number of, this is the cardinality, the number of elements in the set. So not the number of sets, but the number of elements. Number of elements in the set. So E, right, it's like this. You have some contact set, K. Here's k, and then you have some infinite subset of it. So there's a subset of E that consists of infinitely many points. This is something you've you've, you've seen before. Right? It could be, for example, you have some infinite um, sequence that takes on infinitely many values inside here. Right? We've seen this in the when we talked about Bosano wire stress. Um, then uh, E has a limit point. Oops, sorry, an accumulation point. Okay, I should say that. In other books, this is called a, called a limit point. Accumulation point and limit point are the same thing. So in case you go to some other book and they say limit point. Okay. So remember what the accumulation point is, right? Accumulation point means that, um, right, uh, X is an accumulation point. V means that uh, every neighborhood of, of that point like, intersect E is non empty. Is non empty. means that for every epsilon, the punctured neighborhood, the punctured neighborhood 
of the function of epsilon neighborhood of x intersects E. Right? So if you all remember what accumulation is. Like for example, if you're looking at the interval 0, 1, then the point 0 is an accumulation point. Right? Because if you look at if you look at um, any interval around zero, right, it intersects intersects E zero. Yeah, Mia. Um, is every point in the in the open interval zero one an accumulation point? Yes, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So zero one itself actually consists entirely of accumulation points. Yeah, that's true. So maybe, why did I choose this <laughs> why, did I, why did I choose zero rather than some of the point that signs it? Just because it's, I guess, I was thinking it's completely obvious that these guys are accumulation points. Maybe not so obvious that this, this zero, which is outside of the set, is an accumulation point. That's right. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay, so the proof, we can do this by, by contradiction. Suppose E has no accumulation points. Suppose E has no accumulation points. Right. What would that mean? That would mean that every point, every point in E, um, it's not an accumulation point. So, so what? Uh, for every point, for each point in E, there's some neighborhood. There's some neighborhood. There exists a uh, a neighborhood of E uh, that. Intersects the set E um, only at E itself. You mean that it is the intersection of the intersection? Say it again? You mean that the intersection of E and the neighborhood is on the empty set? There is this. Yeah, yeah, well, we remember that it's right. the punct punctured neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? So, so what we're saying is that, um, uh, uh, what we're saying is that um, there exists an epsilon such that the punctured neighborhood around E is that this uh, is empty, right? There's a neighborhood for which the puncture neighborhood, there's a puncture neighborhood, so that if you look at its intersection with E, it's empty. So the only the only thing that's in E is, is E itself, right? right. Okay. OK. And in fact, uh, being, actually, I need to say this a little more generally. Um, uh, so. Let me say this for each, sorry, for each point in K, there's a neighborhood of K that intersects E at most at K, at most at K. Suppose E has no accumulation points in K. So that means that every point of K fails to be an accumulation point, right? So, yeah. But T is a subset of K. Doesn't that mean that um, in some, somewhere where it doesn't belong to K, the difference between E and K, there could be an accumulation point? Say one time, Well, because we want to make that claim about E, but E is a subset of K. About the difference K E, does that mean that we know that there is no accumulation point of the difference K K? What we're going to show is that 
B has an accumulating inflation point in, in K, actually. What's the cost of the no, Nothing, almost nothing. Um, like what if, what if it's outside of the yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Um, oh, cause it's not because it's arbitrary so that if you... I don't get why we're, we're proving the accumulation point outside of E. Well, here's, here's an example of an accumulation point that's outside of E. Right? What we're saying is that, in fact, there's, there's no accumulation points um, uh, there's no accumulation points in the in this in the set containing containing that subset. So we're just trying to prove an accumulation point in K. That's a yeah. What if there is an accumulation point that's not in E but is in K? That's okay. That's what that's that would actually be all right. So we're, what we're going to... Um, oh, because we're, that's what we're proving. It, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so um, we're going we're gonna to see that there's an accumulation point. Um, actually, let me just take this out. Let me just take this out. It, it, it doesn't matter. So we're, we're just going to show that um, E has to have an accumulation point. I, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have done this. But it's still. I still want to say this. Okay. Uh, sorry. Okay. Now it's alright. Um, give me one second. Okay. So we have a compact set. We have an infinite subset. We're going to show that that infinite subset has an accumulation point. Okay. Why? Suppose it has no accumulation points anywhere. No accumulation points. Okay. Then. Every point in K, right? So K is the K is the set that's containing it. Okay. Take any point in K. None of those guys are accumulation points. So everyone is going to have a little neighborhood that intersects E at most at, at E itself, at the center itself. Right? At most. At most, it will intersect at, at at the at that point itself, at the center itself. You know, for example, if if you take a, if you if you took the point in in E, well, certainly it's going to intersect E at that point, right? Right. right. Here's some here's some points E one, E two, E three, E four, right, up to up to infinity, right? Right. Every point in K, including these guys is not, a, not an accumulation point. What does that mean? That at most, when, that there's an, each one has an interval which intersects E at most at the center of that interval. What do you mean by at most? It, could, it will intersect at that, at, at that center or not at all. Right? What is, what's an accumulation point? Accumulation point means that um, uh, that you have this point. Every interval, for every interval, there's somebody in, inside in, inside the punctured interval that intersects intersects E. Right. So huh. I think like. Uh, Okay, okay. So, I don't think you guys are getting this, but um, no guys are, nobody is an accumulation point, right? So nobody is an accumulation point. That means that this guy here is not an accumulation point. What does that mean? It means that there's a punctured neighborhood that doesn't intersect E, right? So there's a neighborhood of it that there's a, the punctured neighborhood doesn't, doesn't intersect E, so at most it intersects at the center. Okay. So, um, okay. So cover, cover, uh, cover K with such uh, neighborhoods. Okay. So 
since k is compact, since k is compact, what? k is compact, so uh, we can find find a subcover, find a subcollection that covers all of k. What does that tell you? Each, each member of the subcollection intersects E at most at the center point. So how many points are there in E? Finally many, right? That will tell you that E is fine. Right? Because each one intersects E at most at the center, and there's only finding the many of them. Right? So it's contradictory. There's only finite points in that subcollection um, that are in E. Right? The cent only the centers of each interval uh, are in E, and there's finite many. So this should be um, kind of familiar to you from something we did earlier, right? The bolzano weierstrass uh, property for sequences, right? Or for, for subsets. Remember, we said that if you have um, uh, if you have uh, a sequence, right? any infinite sequence. Uh -huh. So we had um, you know, any infinite subset of a closed and bounded interval is going to have an accumulation. Point. That was the first bolzano weierstrass uh, theorem. Right. And this is very, very similar to that. Um, right. Any infinite subset of a compact set is going to have an accumulation point. Any, any questions about this? So that was the easy one. <laughs> that was the easy one. Now let's do the one that's, that I think can be a little bit confused. Um, I don't know, maybe this one will turn out to be uh, easier to understand. So let um, A alpha be a collection of compact sets in R. The intersection of any finite subcollection is not empty. Then the intersection of all of them is not empty. Does this remind you of anything? This might remind you of something. Okay, trying to show that the infinite intersection of a bunch of sets is not empty. You have a bunch of sets. Really? Um, nested intervals. 
nested intervals. If you remember that, that group, group project uh, assignment where you showed that if you have a collection of nested intervals, then the infinite intersection is going to be non-empty. Um, so it's a little bit different. I mean, the, the phrasing is a little bit different. We're saying that if the intersection of any finite subcollection is non-empty, right? So if you take any finite subcollection and intersect them, and that's non-empty, then when you take the infinite intersection, it's still going to be non-empty. So let me show you a non-example. Non-example. You can take open sets, right? Like um, uh, zero, one over ten. Right. Here's a bunch of sets. Here's a bunch of sets. They're not compact, right? And what you see is that even though when you intersect a finite number of them, you get something non, you always get something, right? If I take a finite number of these guys, and I take zero to a half, and I intersect it with zero to a third, and I intersect it with zero to a fourth, uh, um, you know, I'm always going to get something. But when you take the infinite intersection, you get nothing. Okay. And what we're saying is that if these guys were compact, that would never. That wouldn't happen. Can you say that yeah. What's the bottom? So, this is to show you that if we throw out compactness, then this fails. Um, if we if we if we try to prove the statement without making the sets compact, mm -hmm. then this would actually fail. Okay. So why it's it's to illustrate why compactness is necessary. Okay. So here's, here's a bunch of sets. They satisfy this, uh, this thing is called the finite intersection property. Finite intersection property. Okay. They, have, they have this finite intersection property. Whenever you take finitely many of these guys and you intersect them, it's not empty. Right? But when you intersect all of them, you get nothing. So, um, but you notice if these were closed sets, if these guys were all closed, then you would actually get something, the zero. Okay. Okay. So um, the proof is by uh, again by contradiction. So we have all these compact sets, right? And we know that they've got the finite intersection property. Let's suppose that the intersection of all of them is empty. Suppose that the intersection of all these guys is actually empty. observation, uh, then the top of that is going to be all of R. Okay. Yeah, yeah, teach it. I just want to make sure I understand this thing correctly. Yes. So when I say any finite subtraction, you mean the subtraction of the collection of compact sets? Yes. Right. You have this collection. Suppose the intersection of any finite subcollection, yeah, of this collection, is is not empty. Okay. And and, and for your for your actual example, you can use the nested nested sets nested nested intervals example. Okay. For example, you know, let example let the collection be zero one over n. These guys. If you intersect any finite number of these intervals, you, you, it's it's non-empty. 
And when you intersect all of them, it's still not, not, still not empty. Okay. Okay, at this point, we go crazy with, with De Morgan's rules. Okay, so um, here, uh, you say, okay, the complement of an intersection is actually the union of the complements. Um, and so what this gives us is, and re remember, recall that, that uh, the K alpha are compact, so they're closed. So the K alpha complement are compact, I'm uh, sorry, are open. gives us is an open covering of, of actually the whole line, and in particular of any any uh, member of its member of the collection. So so for any k alpha naught, right, choose one of them. Um, certainly covers k alpha naught. Set. So, um, no. no. Right. What do you do whenever you have an open cover of a compact set? It's going to be a finite set. That's like the. It's like you know, shadow follows light. <laughs> um, so, yeah, whenever you have an open cover, you're going to choose a finite set. So there exists. So find a subcover, K uh, K I from I to N to Z. See, that covers K I. Actually, let me call it K of I. That's how it is in the roots. is contained in these guys, so if you intersect it with the complement of those guys, then you get nothing, right? That's empty. Okay. Right? Because k alpha naught is, is covered by that set, so it's you know, not, not, not at all, it doesn't intersect the complement of that set. Right? And you see what happens, right? By De Morgan's laws, you see that k alpha naught intersect the intersection of the alpha i is empty. Right. 
which is a contradiction. Right? Because we said that um, the, the, K, the K alphas satisfy the finite intersection property. But here we've got a finite number of K alphas who, whose intersection is empty. Right? We said that any finite intersection of these guys should be non-empty, but here we've created one that's actually empty. So it's a contradiction. Right. Okay, alpha satisfy the uh, intersection property. Okay, is everybody all right? <laughs> no. Okay, good. Thank you for thank you for telling me. Thanks. Great. What what? Tell me tell me where you get confused. Yes. I'm confused by like which part is a contradiction. Which part is a contradiction? Remember, so uh, remember the statement of the thing. The statement was if you have a bunch of compact sets and they satisfy the finite intersection property, then when you intersect them all, you get you you it, it's not empty. Mm -hmm. Could you the finite intersection property says if you intersect any finite number of them, it's not empty. Okay, so that's the contradiction here because here we're intersecting a finite number of them and it is empty. It was supposed to be non empty, but it's, it actually is empty. But, but don't you suppose that when it's empty, it's Suppose that the infinite intersection is empty. So we're not contradicting the finite intersection property. The finite intersection property is that if you intersect finitely many of them, it's empty. But here we're intersecting all of them. It's an infinite set. Okay. So remember, right, you have this. You have this collection, right? This. Uh, an I think I didn't write it. I mean, that's why it's following an infinite collection of open sets. If it's, if it's not an infinite collection, <laughs> then you don't have to worry. Um, uh, if these guys satisfy the finite intersection property, then the intersection of all of them is not empty. Okay. And so we start off by saying, suppose the infinite intersection is empty. And we end up contradicting the finite inter intersection property. Contradiction. <laughs> Is everyone okay? I feel like people are not okay. Are you okay? You're not okay. You're okay. Okay, it's again, again, I just can't read your pieces. How do people come up with that? I mean, with all those definitions of compactness and things like that. Right, right, right. I, I think it must have taken a long time. It, it was not easy. Right. How do you justify coming up with that particular definition? Because it's, it's not needed. I mean, it's not physics where you needed to explain it. Something that's happening. Right, it's right. Just a mental construct. Right, right. But you're trying to explain something else, right? You're trying to explain a certain phenomenon, right? Uh, which is that, you know, that, um, you know, for example, the extreme value theorem, mm -hmm. right? Why does why does the extreme value theorem work? And you start thinking about it, then it turns. I mean, this is one. This what we'll see is that this is one way of approaching it, mm -hmm. um, and it turns out to be. So the thing is that. Um, uh, it comes from from necessity. It might you, know, you might think like, well, what's the what's the need? <laughs> you don't feel the pressure, but uh, but it actually comes from a necessity. The necess necessity is 
suppose you wanted to do this sort of do this sort of stuff, but um, uh, in a world where you didn't have a metric. <laughs> okay, and that's that's actually it. Suppose you you're in a world where you don't have you only have a notion of open sets. You only have what's called a topology, but you don't have a metric. Mm. Okay, so you don't have a sense of distance. Okay, well then, what is what kind of what would be necessary? What would be needed? Uh, what would be the property of the set that's needed to ensure something like the extreme value theorem? And it turns out to be uh, this this notion of compactness. Mm -hmm. There are other, and then there are other notions. Um, um, there are all sort of other ways of, of viewing compactness, um, and they they occur. You know, because they, they occurred because people said, oh, this is another way of explaining, explaining it. And then it turned out, in, in, in metric spaces, it turns out that all those notions of compactness are the same, and we just call them all compactness. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's necessity, <laughs> um, although sort of like you might think, well, what's, in, what's the need? Uh, the need is to just to push knowledge forward or to just make progress. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it might seem it might seem strange, but that's that was the drive. That is the drive. Right to make things simpler, to make things understood. Right on on Hilbert's grave, I think it says something like, uh, "We must know, we will know." Right, that's uh, that's on his on his gravestone in in German. Uh, I don't know what it says. Okay, that's that's it for today. I was going to talk more, but I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs>